Today I will be showing you how to babysit. This is my nephew Miles and he's 13 months. First, you'll want to baby proof the house or area that you're in. If you need to, you can move some furniture so you can keep your eyes on him. Stay in here. <coughs> your main goal is to keep the kids safe and happy. Here are some things I like to do to keep them happy. Some things I like to do is give them books and toys to play with. Give them age appropriate snacks. With parental approval, then you can have limited screen time with the kid, and it's a good activity to keep them calm. TV shows nowadays have very harsh colors and voices, and that's not smart to put in front of brains that are just starting to develop. So I like putting on shows that are soft colors, soft voices, and won't be harsh on the brain. A few of the examples are Bluey and shows that I used to watch when I was really little and preferably ones that are educational. It's also fun to have a dance party. <laughs> you could also play outside, but it's a little too cold for that right now. Food isn't a very important step in babysitting and you need to have parental approval of what you give them because of the size, shape, and texture of every food. Goldfish is a good option to have for Miles' age group, and if you don't have goldfish and they don't have teeth, then you can give them applesauce. Make sure everything they pick up is safe for them and they can't choke on it. No matter how many kids you're babysitting, you need to know where all of them are at all times. If they are consistently angry, then you can check these three things. Dirty diaper, tired, or hungry. You can usually tell when a diaper needs to change by the smell or the baby being very angry. First, you're gonna need to take off the diaper, the, the dirty diaper, and if it needs wiped, wipe. And then put, you're gonna get the new diaper. We'll throw that one away, wrap it and then go like this, put the flaps with the Velcro on at the bottom, put the baby right there, then go like this about where like the belly is, and then you're gonna get the Velcro, do it kind of tight but not too tight because it could irritate the skin, and then that's how you put a diaper on a baby. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a bottle. Miles is now off formula and I was asked to use milk. The parents said to use 2% milk, so that's what I'm doing. It's, this is another reason why asking the parents for the information is very important because you need to know the ratio of milk, water, and formula that's going into the bottle. Right now, Miles is taking six ounces of 2% milk. Also make sure you ask about allergies, like food, soaps, anything like that. Before the parents leave, make sure you have all the information and like emergency contacts. It's very important to have the parents' information, their grandparents' numbers, and just anyone's numbers, neighborhoods, um, because if something were to happen, then you would be able to notify the parents. Make sure you ask where the diapers, blankets, binkies, bottles are all at so you know the, where all the necessities are. Make sure every place they stop is a safe place and not too high and they're not on the edges. Remember that this is a job. Take it professionally. Don't, don't be on your phone and give the kids your full attention. Ask the parents about each kid's bedtime. It may be really hard to have them fall asleep, but it's very important to respect the, their bedtimes. When putting the kids to bed, you have to be very patient and calm because they're used to their parents putting them to bed and not a person that they just met. So you have to be very understanding of their routine. So if they're asking for a lot, you just have to kind of go with it and understand them so that they can get a good night's sleep. This part is optional. Before the parents get home, I like cleaning the blankets, toys, books, and etc. that we used. I also like cleaning the dishes 
even if we didn't use them, I still do it. Here are a few more tips about babysitting and how to do it safely. You'll want to make sure that the house is locked up and secure. You wouldn't want anything to happen. You're not the legal guardian of the kid and you're just the kid too. It's very important to make sure the house is secured and not able to get into because you wouldn't want to get kidnapped or robbed. It's very a big thing, not around here, but in some part, in some places, you have to be careful because they, they'll, some people watch you and see if you're home alone with kids and that's when they'll get you. So you have to be careful. Make sure the blinds are closed, doors are locked, windows are locked, just, just to be safe. If the baby were to get hurt or fallen or tripped, then you'd want to know how to be able to be there for them. If they're mad that it happened, then just kind of give them space. But if they're sad and crying, just be there for them. Try holding them, get them, get them their favorite binky blanket, and it, that might help a lot. Playing outside is very beneficial. It makes them creative and playful and gets a lot of energy out. Miles loves playing outside. It just, it's a little too cold for him, like I said, and you have to be careful with the temperature. If it's too hot, don't let him get overheated. If it's too cold, put on some extra layers. You also need to remember that they're just kids. It doesn't matter what age. They're just kids. They're younger than you, and they can't, they don't know what you're talking about sometimes, so you gotta make it to their level and understand them and just be very patient with the kids. This is my demonstration speech about how to babysit a baby. Why don't you hang your phone?